with a quarter of a century under their belts and no lineup changes to speak of, Irish superstars U2 have earned their title of rock survivors. While other bands of their era, the Spando Ballets and Whams of the World, self-combusted years ago, U2's musical innovation and solid band chemistry have kept their dream alive. And yet, however well you get along as blokes, you don't survive long if you choose to live in some stratospheric wanker layer above the common man. JLo might say she knows which block she comes from, but U2 actually still base themselves in their hometown of Dublin. We play our songs to, to everyone, to be honest with you. If somebody delivers pizza, we will bring them in. I've done it many times, play them our new album. Everyone, uh, from the cleaning ladies here, to our kids, to our mates. And because you, when you're listening to your own music with somebody, you sort of hear it through their ears. And we can and have and will do again, disappear up our own arse. So it is nice to have somebody occasionally shout up and say, come down. Dublin is a, uh, it's a fun place. And we've had a, we've had, you know, all our family are here, all our friends are here. And really, we are sort of part-time rock stars. You know, there is a sense that we go out, be in a band, you know, playing um, and being rock stars. And then we kind of come home um, to bubble in Dublin. And we just disappear into the shadows and the lanes and the places that uh, you've just been over the last 24 hours. People have a very interesting attitude um, to rock stars here in the city, uh, which is, is verging on the... Uh, um, intolerant and that kind of suits us if you've got kids which we have now I want them to grow up around a healthy disrespect for money and success tell us about this this building what is this place well you are in Dublin City down by the uh, the end of the canal system which is a 19th century system that predates like the big roads and uh, so a hundred years ago in this little canal basin which is outside the window here there would have been hundreds of canal barges filled with all kinds of goods heading up to all parts of the country we've had a kind of long history with this area and then i guess about what 10 years ago we we've we discovered this building was for sale and we bought it and we put our studio in here and we've been making records here ever since it's nice to know that even the biggest band in the world has a band room that's just second-hand furniture and a bunch of guitars lying around. Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble, but you two show that it works in your favour long term. Adopt a self-deprecating tone, look after your fans, and offer evidence of your own fallibility for best results, especially if you're guilty of giant lemons. This pure spinal tap, obviously all that stuff. And we knew as we were making it that we were staring down the tap. Um, and I think, you know, the, the laugh was, was somewhat on us when one night in Norway it, it didn't open. Uh, anyone who remembers the Giant Lemon, it was a part of the Pop Mart tour. It was this huge mirable lemon that revolved and moved slowly down the ramp. Uh, at the end of the ramp it would open slowly and we would walk out down a set of steps. Well, on this occasion it stopped opening after about 18 inches so you could kind of see our feet inside <laughs> but that was it and all the smoke and everything was going off and it was hilarious we were actually killing ourselves laughing we do think genuinely that we have the best job in the world and i think we all feel in a weird way that with all the support and and um success that we've been given by our fans that the deal is you know you can have the fancy houses and the, and the, the fancy cars just don't make crap music you know and so that's another reason for us to really be so careful about what we release you know we, we don't want to let people down and we were always the run to the pack you know we start off we were from Dublin and um, we were always like maybe not quite as cool as all those other London bands and uh, you know we, we always sort of struggle with that so we've always had a sort of a fight in our hand we're fighting Irish and um, you know we, we, we can't let go so we want to be 
uh, in the charts. We want to be on top of the pops. We want to be on your TV show. And um, we don't want to f go into that other place. And um, where you're trading off your past. And the last piece of advice we can offer, based on the U2 case study, is don't knock the faith. However unrock and roll it may be, U2 credit their religious convictions with keeping their careers and themselves safe. For Michael Hutchins. The careers of In Excess and U2 ran parallel courses, both bands tasting commercial success in the early 80s and conquering the world later that decade. In 1997, the year that U2 released their pop album, In Excess frontman Michael Hutchins died in circumstances the coroner determined to be suicide. wouldn't dare to try to imagine what was going on in in Michael's head on that night, um, but um, I'll be really honest with you, I get really black sometimes, I get really, really depressed and, and I can go very seriously down, but when I do, I never hit bottom. I really never do. There's something underneath it. You know, whatever it is, it's my faith, my belief, you know, that there's, you know, a reason, you know, there's, I've got, maybe there's, you know, Ali, or there's the kids, there's about something. Who's I? I just, I just, I just don't hit, I don't actually, and I jump, you know, sometimes, you know, off. And, but I, I don't ever hit the ground. I don't ever, and I, and I guess, Michael did that night and um, and it makes me ask a lot of questions about myself or you know um, but um, that's I, that's a place I don't want to be in is a blue music for us as is some kind of you know sacrament in the end we are very serious about that and of course that makes you know that makes you vulnerable it makes you you know uh, wide open for a good slagging off for a start we deserve it but it also means that people know that there's no f front that you may have front i might have front but not in the songs you're completely raw you know if you do god's work god maybe does yours um, but it feels like that because it shouldn't be this good and um, so I, I, it's, it, it is just a strange thing if you, go, if you look after other people your own shit gets looked after it seems to be the way it's working in this band and now if the album's really shite next album's really shite don't blame God